Everybody ready? We'll get started. Okay. Um, thank you. We're going to do the first slide. So I'm uh, Dara McDonald, the city administrator. For those of you who don't know me, um, up here with me are Michael Yerman, our community development director, and Bob Salme, the public works director. Thank you for coming out tonight in uh, the middle of the week. We really appreciate uh, when citizens show up to comment on projects. Uh, the intent tonight is to garner public input to help the city council to decide whether or not they would like to direct us to change the width of the street and parkway, uh, specifically on H Street. We are excited that we're embarking on another pretty significant rebuild street and water rebuild project this year, and again, doing that without incurring uh, any debt in 2014, which is a nice position to be in. I want to assure you that everyone will have the ability to speak, if you'd like to, at least once. Um, because we do have a substantial number of people here, we're going to ask to limit those comments to three minutes each. And then um, we've also distributed to the uh, city council a number, I think up to nine, email comments that staff had received on this topic as well for them to consider. So the format tonight, we'll give a presentation on the project scope and the alternative design that's been proposed, and then take public comment, leaving time for uh, city council discussion. And if there's a clear direction, the city council can certainly go ahead and give that to staff so we can keep moving ahead and finalizing the design for the street and get this project out to bid as quickly as possible. Uh, the plans were um, pretty far along. Uh, in the design phase before uh, this topic arose, this idea came up to consider widening the parkways. And so we were hoping actually to have been out to bid this week on the project. But when this came up and the council directed us that they wanted to consider public comment on the idea, uh, we stopped doing any more design work. And Matt Hudson, our primary, engineer, uh, primary designer on this project is, is actually here tonight and happens to be a resident on H Street. Um, and so we are a little bit behind our goal of getting out to bid on this project very early in January, um, but Bob will talk a little bit more about the schedule. But we would like to keep it moving forward. Um, so we would encourage people again this evening, because there are a lot of people here and who want to comment, to try and focus your comments to the specific topic at hand, which is really your feelings about um, whether or not to widen the asphalt, or I'm sorry, narrow the asphalt and widen the parkways, or to leave things as the status quo. And we appreciate um, people trying to stay focused and um, help the council to understand the sentiments of the neighborhood and the community as they move forward in this decision. With that, I'll turn it over to our public works director. Good evening. Glad to see you all out here tonight. And uh, as you know, we're the most of you over the last few years, your objective has been to get rid of the little holes in the road. Uh, we don't like filling them in either, so we'll be glad if we can proceed on and can't hear. Hello. That's better? Okay. So as it is right now, H Street, we hope to start on, on the north end by 3rd Street, where it, it comes down by Hilton Lumber and go as far as 10th Street this year. Uh, we're going to bid it out in ways that we can add or take back from the project depending on what kind of prices we're able to get or if the council decides that we can put more money into it. There is a lot to be looked at yet at this point. You know, I mean, we haven't gone out to bid, so you really don't know for sure. But at any rate, we hope to finish the rest of the project in 2015, but we don't yet now. hear that okay nobody wants me to start over do you no I didn't think so if we get to go ahead tonight or if, if we wait until January 21st at the next council meeting 
we will probably publish on the, if we have time enough to get the, the redone prints and bid specs and everything out, we would publish on the 19th through the, through the 5th of March. Um, it does take a little while to get the prints done and, and have the publishing dates, and we could have the bid open around the beginning of March or the 5th and award it the day after St. Patrick's Day. It's not as soon as what I'd like, but um, but that you know we're going to do what we got to do. So we have budgeted almost six hundred thousand dollars to rebuild the H Street infrastructure, and I'll go into a little more detail about what that is. And then three hundred ninety thousand is budgeted for replacing all the the water lines down through the street. Uh, there's a little bit in sewer. Um, but only one road crossing, so it, it's really not a major part. The objectives, um, as I said earlier, to get rid of the potholes, but that means new pavement. Uh, curbs and gutters, as it stands right now, we're looking at going with curb and gutter from 3rd Street all the way to the highway. It'll be new driveway access. The corners where there is sidewalks is going to have ADA access. Uh, kind of the ones that we have downtown now that, that are going out both ways and uh, we'll be painting crosswalks especially up at the school. One of the things that happens with the water and putting more blacktop out is you get a, a better drainage and we've already had a drainage problem down at the corner by 3rd and, and by Hilton Lumber basically. So. We would like to eliminate that, and we're, we're looking at different plans, but we do need to move the water. So that, that's in the, in looking at it, what we need to do, we still are figuring out. Uh, and then there, the, uh, the driveway accesses, the ADA, storm sewer, sanitary sewer on 7th Street, um, that's just going to cross the road and pick up the sewer from one side to the other so that at a later date, we don't have to dig down and replace, dig into the blacktop and, and go through the through the road if we have a sewer problem there. And uh, the water lines, they're they're small, uh, they're 80 to 100 years old. We don't really know for sure how long. You don't have a lot of capacity for fire or anything else. And just kind of like show and tell when I was in grade school. I brought this along. It's uh, that's that's what a piece of four-inch water line looks like, and and when they when they look like they do here, and they've got a hole in it, you lose a lot of water. So, you know, it, it's not going to get any better on its own. That's one reason why we delayed it. We we really want to fix that infrastructure. And if you if you go along and you just fix the pipe and you don't do anything with the service lines. Uh, I know sometimes in the past they've, they've fixed the service lines, but then you end up going down and digging them up because they, they break in the old main. So we want to do it right to get the, to get the main changed out, new modern materials properly bedded, and bring the service line out to the, to the street with new, out to the houses with new uh, curb stops. We'll have more capacity for fire protection. Uh, there'll be a, a better looping of the water system. Uh, as you all know, we've been working on the, the freezing problem in town. Uh, we had 300 different people run out of water when it froze last year. I want to say we're lucky this year. We haven't had one that we've been able to say it's a meter that has uh, froze. I know I shouldn't say anything yet, but we're hoping to keep going along. Uh, so far, it's been mild. But we want to bring... H Street up to the to the spec that we have adopted over the last year. Uh, this should eliminate a lot of the freezing problems if we go with the new spec. Hopefully, most of the places I'm hoping can put the the meter inside the house or in a crawl space or someplace that's a heated place where I think it belongs. Those that can't, we've got deeper meter pits that can go into the. Uh, where the meter pits are, hopefully not in the sidewalks either, because they they work better in the in the lawn or someplace that has snow on it. 
but we should end up with better fire protection and a whole lot more dependable water system. And it'll outlive all of us. So that, that's a very big thing with that. The, uh, another benefit to doing this, we've been in meetings with the utility companies other than ourselves. We only do water and sewer, of course, but Atmos already has gas lines in the street and they would like this opportunity to go through and fix theirs because I think they've got some problems with their, their gas lines and of course this is the best time for them to do it. So before the project even gets started, the utilities are going to be able to get in there and do their work. CenturyLink doesn't have a lot, but they've got, a, I think, a couple of blocks of aerial cable going down on the eastern side of the street and a few other places. They're going to bring their lines down and bury them. And Excel is burying as much as possible. Uh, and I think it's going to be enough that you'll see a difference. The streetscape should look very, very good. And Charter has also said that they, they will go along with it and, and move theirs too. So I'm, I'm very happy with the way that the utility companies have been cooperating and, and they're, they're ready to go as soon as we get some frost out of the ground. Part of what we're going to end up doing is removing any existing hardscape that we have, meaning concrete, uh, rocks, whatever. We're going to have to move all of that and we'll be trying to communicate with everybody that if you've got plantings that you've got out in the parkway between the curb and the sidewalk, those will have to be moved before we can do anything with the curbs because we don't want to destroy them. And, uh, I think you'll know when it's time to move them, but uh, you can always call anytime you want and let us know. We also do have tree problems down there. Um, Michael's going to talk about that. And um, a lot of the trees, you know, they, they get in, the roots are moving the curbs and uh, it gets expensive and it's very hard to, to just move the, do something with the trees and not to have them fall down later if we just cut the roots. So. Uh, that's kind of where we are, and um, I think Michael's going to take it from here. So um, to touch on one thing that Bob mentioned, we are going to be, if you signed up tonight on those sign-up sheets, we will be sending out project updates. So if you didn't have the opportunity, especially if you live on H Street, please provide your email address um, so that we can send out when the project's starting, um, and then also if we need to let you know about moving some of your vegetation and stuff from the parkway. We'll be trying to keep you guys up to date as much as possible throughout this whole process. Um, as you guys know, I got some lovely photos of 8th Street. Um, the existing conditions of what's going on out there, um, this is why we're undergoing a complete street rebuild. We got some large trees um, that are becoming um, a hazard in the parkways. Um, as you can see, these large mature trees, uh, I'll get into the street trees a little bit more, but they're starting to heave sidewalks and crumble the curbs. We've got some great potholes that um, if you're riding a bicycle down the street, as I do, um, can throw you off your bike. Um, and then the curbs all the way through H Street are to the point where we're going to be removing all of the curb. We're not going to piece some wheat. Sometimes when we do street projects, we try to save good curb infrastructure. But unfortunately, H Street, the curb infrastructure is at the point where we're going to be removing all of the existing curb. So um, in your packet that you were handed, there's these two cross sections. Uh, as we were proceeding down the process of doing this, the city planned on keeping the street as it exists today. We actually got through a lot of engineering, and it was keeping the existing street the way it is. So, I want to be clear, the plan from the get-go was to keep the current width. Um, an alternative, however, though, was presented to council. Um, and so going back to the existing street, the existing street right now, um, there's a, it's a 60-foot right-of-way. However, there's only about 58 feet of improvements. Obviously, it's hard to do a standard cross-section for an entire street because it changes um, as you go up the street. People have placed 
bikes. I walk in there, and basically there's about a foot buffer on both sides of the right-of-way. Um, we'd also like to keep that foot buffer because that's how you form sidewalk and avoid, you know, going on people's private property. Um, so the public right-of-way on H Street is 60 feet. Currently, there's a five-foot sidewalk where there is. Um, the parkways are four and a half feet. There is an eight-foot parking area. Um, of that eight foot, six inches of that is actually curb, the actual vertical curb, and another two feet of that is the pan. Um, obviously, you can park your tire in that pan, so that's part of the parking. And then right now, as of today, there's 11 and a half foot drive lane. The alternative that was proposed, the big, the big difference here is the parkway. The parkway would now be six feet, which would allow for um, a little bit larger trees, which I'll get into, and that would also shrink the drive lane to 10 feet. Um, I will get into what a 10-foot drive lane means for speeds um, a little bit later in this, but um, the big difference here, again, is about a three-foot loss in the drive lanes. So if you, as I go through, you guys can look at that handout because um, this is probably the most important thing. And on that handout, I'd also point out that there's a little checkbox, what we'd like for you guys at the end of this presentation um, is to check which of those you prefer and that way city council can have a, at least a little bit of a tally on whether um, on what the audience prefers so sh street trees and parkway um, actually this is from the colorado state extension office um, the recommended parkway width for street trees is actually eight feet so even what we're proposing is probably inadequate for large mature street trees um, when the planning strip between the street and sidewalk is less feet, the tree health, the vigor, the, and the lifespan will be um, reduced. And now, to be clear, the trees in the parkways currently that are large, mature trees, their lifespan, they could keep growing. It's when they actually become a hazard. And typically, large shade trees start to become a hazard after about 30 years. And the way they become a hazard is, one, because the root systems aren't able to expand like a normal tree would, because a normal tree root system is actually the same as the canopy, if not larger. Um, and as you can see, those large mature, large mature trees, their canopies go over the street. When their roots are not able to expand and they start breaking the curb and heaving sidewalks, that's actually a sign that the tree is actually becoming stressed. And when you have a stressed tree, it becomes a hazard. You have the, the possibility of limbs falling, larger limbs falling, um, and obviously the health of the tree is at jeopardy. So typically, larger shade trees, believe it or not, a street tree in Salida is really, their lifespan is really only 30 years before they become a hazard. Certainly, they could grow a lot longer and continue to grow. But at 30 years, that's when you start seeing the, the curb is being broken. That's when the, when the sidewalks start to be heaved. Um, and so, um, and that's with the four and a half foot parkway. Um, street tree replacement should be staggered. Um, we, had a, we have a beautiful mature street canopy that was planted probably 60 years ago. And as you know, and as we have been doing, we've been starting to remove a lot of those mature trees. The goal, and as the tree board has been working with the adopt a tree program, which I'll get into here in just a second, um, is to try to stagger the tree replacements on all streets across the city, therefore creating a diverse canopy of different ages so that when we do a project like this, we're not losing all the trees at once. Unfortunately, that's one of those things that's only been occurring. Well, tree trees have been planted since the founding of the city, but the, street, the tree board has been aggressively doing that for like how many years? About 14 years, we've actually had a program that's been aggressively trying to, to stagger the tree canopy. Um, the current parkways are at four and a half feet, just simply put, are not, as recommended by the Colorado Extension Office, are not um, meant for larger shade trees. Um, therefore, we've been replacing them with smaller or ornamental trees um, with our adopt tree program. This is a study that was done for Fort Collins, street tree benefits. Street trees actually have a return on the dollar. Larger trees are actually nine, uh, 92 cents above the dollar that you spend on them um, and environmental benefits. Those environmental benefits are increased property values, energy savings, um, heavily treed streets that um, have mature trees are actually ten, almost 10 degrees cooler in the summer, believe it or not, 
what the study said. Um, obviously, it acts as a buffer for noise abatement. We all know the rural trees play in removing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. And then hydrology, um, that's your, the more pervious surface you have, the more runoff you have. Um, <clears throat> if we do go to the wider parkway, what's that mean for each tree? The street, uh, tree board could recommend larger shade trees um, as an alternative smaller ornamental trees that will be replacing the mature trees. So having a six foot parkway would allow for different species that probably wouldn't be recommended at this time. Um, and to be clear, if you're losing a tree with this project, um, in that packet there is a form for adopt a tree. Um, you can fill that out and drop that off at the city hall and we will be getting back with you. We do a site, the tree board does a site visit and um, makes a recommendation on a tree. I believe there's a $50 fee um, for that tree and we use our Arbor Day um, funds to replace those trees. So please fill those out and bring them back to City Hall if you're interested in that program and we'll certainly be working with you over the spring to get that done. So going to the pavement, this is the drive lanes. Currently the pavement width is 34 feet and then you add an additional four feet for curb and gutter, meaning that there is an 11 and a half foot drive lane if you have a car parked. Um, to give you an idea of what 11 and a half foot um, drive lane is, that's a half a foot smaller than what we have on Highway 50. So our current highway is 12 feet, so our drive lanes are on our local streets are only a half a foot smaller. Um, as we know, one of our biggest concerns with our streets is safety. Um, this graph basically illustrates that if you're in a car and how fast you're driving and you hit a pedestrian, what are the odds and what's the extent of the injury? As you can see at six and level six on the left side, that's when you start getting into the fatality range and that's at a speed of about 35 miles an hour. Um, our H Street in this particular instance has speed limits posted at 25 miles an hour and in 15 miles an hour in the school zones. Um, this graph right here is from the model traffic code and this is the recommended drive lane with an association with speeds. Um, a yield street is when you have a car coming one way, a car coming the other, and you basically have to almost come to a stop and you kind of maneuver around each other. Um, those are recommended for speeds less than uh, 20 miles an hour and that's when you don't have two designated drive lanes and those would be drive lanes under, um, under nine feet. Um, currently, the recommended by the model traffic code, the recommended speeds for, or the recommended width for a drive lane for our speeds would be somewhere in the nine foot to 10 foot range. Um, low speeds, which are streets designated for about 30 to 35, would be 10 to 11 miles an hour. So currently with the current proposal, um, as it is in front of council today, the actually the widening of the parkway probably will not have any impact on speeds um, as they are today. So. 30 to 35 miles an hour, we'll still have, probably have a speeding problem. So that's not what's gonna be solved with this. And then I just wanted to give a real quick reference on with the vehicles. I know I drive an F-150 um, Ford truck. That's about a six and a half foot truck. I certainly have a little bit wider mirrors. And to give a little bit more perspective, our, fi our new fire engine that we just recently purchased from mirror to mirror, not from the end of it. From mirror to mirror is, is eight foot, um, four inches. So two fire trucks in Salida could drive down 8th Street in the proposed alternative um, and their mirrors would not hit. So there is also a little bit of a cost savings if we do eliminate some asphalt. Um, it's about 1900 per block and it will be a savings of about $26,000 26, um, for over the 14 blocks of 8th Street. So um, the 8th Street decision, again, the city originally proposed to keep each H Street the way it was. We are, with Council's um, request, looking at that alternative, but widening the parkway would not prohibit local truck traffic, would not inhibit our emergency vehicles, and wire park our wire parkways ultimately would allow us to the discretion, the tree board to discretion, to allow for larger trees. Um, I'm happy to answer any quick questions from Council before we possibly turn it over to public comment. Uh, Michael, I had one caller ask, uh, first of all, they want to leave the street as wide as you can leave it. And then they said, what if you put the sidewalk right up against the curb instead of putting the parkway between the curb and the sidewalk? 
What if you put the sidewalk right up against the curb? And, and then you could talk about, instead of a five foot walk, maybe you have a, a four and a half or a four foot walk. Then the city property would be on the house side of, uh, of the sidewalk and you could put your trees there and you could possibly put bigger trees in uh, if you had them on the inside of the walk, even though they'd still be on city property. That's certainly, uh, those are called attached sidewalks to the curb. Um, the thing you lose with that, Tom, is the buffer for the pedestrian from the street. So that, I mean, you, there, those curbs do exist like downtown. Um, typically the parkway does serve as a safety, as a safety buffer. Um, from for pedestrians, but that's not not an uncommon thing to be seen. The only other thing with that is when you do plow the streets, you push the you push the snow onto the sidewalk instead of the instead of the parkway. But again, it's you know, got the snow here, right, Bob? <laughs> no, I was just uh, and only one person mentioned that, but I thought, well, maybe we're getting outside of the box. Maybe maybe that's an alternative certainly could be explored. And Michael, uh, the width of First Street in the 100 block is 38 feet. I measured it was actually 37 feet, 7 inches. The parking down there on that First Street is 7 foot 7 wide, and the traffic lane is 12 feet. And the point that I'm making here is uh, when you look at First Street and you see bicycles going down, especially in that area, it's pretty difficult for them to get around a bicycle with parked cars there without entering the opposing lane of traffic. And uh, in my experience, at most traveled portions are 12 foot. And uh, of course, the speed limit inside is 25, and on H Street, it should be 15 in that school zone. And uh, as I researched it and I looked at F Street, and I can't give you a figure on F Street, but it's close to that, to those same figures. And so people could get an idea how, how wide H Street is. I was told that it was 34 feet. And uh, I was also called by the uh, retired chief of police, Leonard Post, today from Arizona, that uh, heard this and, and read about it. And he wanted me to publicly uh, state that he has a, a problem with this and uh, is not in favor of it, primarily because of the safety issues. And he pointed out a good point. He said, if you look at those little signs, it says, state of Colorado, uh, state law says, uh, you know, the pedestrians, and it's sitting in the middle of the street, which is, Poncha Springs, or, or I mean Poncha Boulevard, or uh, or on uh, G Street. He said it's made it difficult for traffic going both ways to go through there, especially when there's parked cars. Not to say the least about semis on First Street. Uh, and he had a point. He also indicated that we talked about the speeds. There was some concerns about the speeds and trying to get the speeds down on. He indicated to me that over the years that he's lived here, which has been very many, and uh, raised his children and stuff, that there have been less accidents on Park Avenue, which is right over here in, in Ward 3, and on Poncha Boulevard. And he attributes the, the uh, accidents not happening there because of the width of the street. And he also was concerned about the bicycle traffic and what was going to happen there. And uh, I told him that I would convey that to this uh, group and uh, bring his attention. So he is opposed to that, and uh, I thought he brought some pretty good points out in that, in that feature. Now, as far as the street, uh, what Mr. Yerke said, I thought was a good idea because, uh, number one, when I pull up to those curbs, try to get out, there's rocks in there, or there's some other thing, and you can't get out without either tearing the bottom of your car apart, 
or tripping and falling over those rocks and things in a parkway. So I thought that was a very good offer. I was contacted for uh, over 12 people, and uh, they were all in opposition of, of this to keep it the same because they don't want to give up the width of their street. So I guess the question I asked you, uh, Michael, is you said what what is there is 11 foot traffic lanes now? 11 and a half. 11 and a half, and how much do you allow for parking? Seven and a half, same as First Street when you and, put in. And where did you take the measurements at? Uh, down, down the block. Okay. Do you have any idea down around Hilton Lumber Company where those semis are coming in with the width? That's width? actually a lot larger because in front of the plowboy there, you don't have a parkway. You don't have what? You don't have a parkway, so you have an extra four feet. So you have about 14 feet of drive lane down there. And then also, well, we're going to put curb there. So you'll actually, on Hilton's side, you don't have curb, but there'll be curb. So um, at this point now, but. We need to keep the, the water out of Hilton Lumber. So we're going to put curb in there. But oh, that's, a, that's a really wide section of H Street down there. Oh, yeah. So, Mike, just one point of clarification. The measurement on the 34 feet, that's pavement. And then when you add the four feet to it, that's when, when you add the four feet with the curbs, that's where you get the extra width. So, actually, you're telling me that H Street's 38 feet wide now. Right. So, the pavement width, curb. pavement width is only 34, but then you add the four feet. So, okay. that's where the confusion was, and I apologize. And the first street, which is a state highway, same from curb to curb is 37 feet 7 inches. Same. And I know how difficult it is to drive two cars down there. And you also live on a street that's a 30-foot street, and that's Wood Avenue. And I'll, I'll tell you right up front, it's, we had to actually pull over or stop to have traffic go both ways there. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's been deemed a one-way street because it was so narrow. I had trees, beautiful trees, and I love those trees. They've done the same thing that these are doing, and you know those trees do have a lifespan, and uh, I don't want to see them go either. But uh, at the same time, I sure hate to cut down and, and lose what we already have for safety reasons. And uh, I've had some of those limbs and stuff fall on my house. From up there, they're not being pruned. They're not a lot of them are not taken care of. You guys want to open up to the public? Nobody? You guys want to come in? <laughs> there are still some seats up here, so come on in. <clears throat> Welcome, Aaron. Um, Aaron Manlocorn, 527H. And um, I just wanted to reiterate what Mr. Bauer said about the safety. <clears throat> Currently, uh, with the street width, it is a tight squeeze, especially if um, you have a parked car on both sides. Maybe it's a truck. Um, you have kids riding their bikes down to school. And um, I've seen many times cars needing to pull over to not hit a bicyclist or to get around a, a truck that happens to be parked. You know, not everyone is a perfect parker and some people will park a foot away from the curb. And, you know, I know with my truck, with my big mirrors, you know, it definitely creates a safety hazard. And I don't think the uh, benefit uh, for the trees by adding a foot and a half of space is worth the safety. Thank you. Thank you. Before we go any farther, if you could state your name, if you're a city resident, and if you're an H Street resident, and try to keep it at three minutes. Thank you, Chuck. No need to sign in, Chuck. No need. Okay. Is there a sheet up there? No, that's what I ask. Uh, okay. Chuck Rose, 1127 I Street. Um, I'm not a traffic engineer, so what I did in a previous position I had, and over the past week, is I looked on the internet and did a bunch of research. Narrower streets, slow traffic. 
There was one study done, I believe it was by Missouri Department of Transportation, where the same street that went from 11 and a half to 9 feet, and they anticipated, the researchers anticipated, as we all would and as you've heard today, that as when the street chokes down, there would be an increased number of accidents where? In the narrower street? It was reduced by 31 percent. So sometimes what we perceive may not be real. Um, so I will just say I don't live on 8th Street. I think the people on 8th Street should have their choice. However, our comprehensive plan says our transportation is for pedestrians, bicyclists, and automobiles. And leaving the street wide, we're making a decision that we are designing our city, maintaining the design of our city for people transporting themselves in automobiles. I think we should make that clear. The real issue, I think, gentlemen and ladies, that you need to consider is in our 36 miles of street, are you going to have a meeting for every street as to how every citizen, how every group street wants their street? Now, I will admit, it might end up all the same or it might end up a wonderfully eclectic mix. I'm glad I'm not Bob Salme trying to anticipate what the cost of street redesign would be if every street could potentially be different. Um, and I think that is the real issue here tonight is are we going to have a comprehensive plan that stitches the city together based upon an ethical and financial and the decision of what we want our city to be? Or are we going to allow every street to make their own decision? I have little opinion on that. However, if every time we redesign a street, we're going to have a meeting like this and let the people of that street who, like myself, I have a lifetime lease. That lease is going to run out. So what I might want today may not be what the street needs, in my case, 20 years from now. That's a decision you folks have to make, is how do you want to plan for the city? And that is the real concern I have, and that's what I thought I'd mention tonight. I want to thank you for this, uh, this, my ability to speak, giving me that opportunity. And I'd like to commend everybody who shows up. I mean, I thought we were having some great movie or something when I walked in here and saw all these people here. Um, and um, you guys should be honored that you're having this meeting. Thank you very much. Mr. Rose, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Sure. Weren't you riding a bicycle <clears throat> northbound on 8th Street this afternoon? As a matter of fact, I ride and drive 8th Street. I was raised in Minnesota, and you guys need to know, 8th Street is in great shape. Being a street, being a street in Minnesota is a tough life. And 8th Street for Minnesota, which also has the highest property taxes and taxes in the country, is in great shape. And I ride my bike there, and I drive there because there's less traffic. And I passed you today, and I want to compliment you on your manner of riding that bicycle, I think. Were you in the Camaro? I was. It scared me. I know you were I know you were a passenger, you but it didn't look too. like the guy. Well, you had the stop sign. It yeah. didn't look like the guy was going to stop. No. And so I locked it up. You did. Yeah. Um, and, uh, so, and I saw it was you, and thanks for the wave, Mike. Anyway. And thanks for wearing your safety equipment, your helmet and such. And I knew yeah. you were concerned, but... I was driving down there for the same reason that you probably were. Yes, yes. You were in the passenger seat. To the I was. Yeah, yeah, okay. I was afraid to drive. Yeah, I was in the passenger seat of my bicycle. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you. Keep it down. I want to thank Dan for letting me go first. Um, Bill Smith, Salida. I actually live in Trailside. I don't live on H Street. I used to own property there. I am pretty familiar with it. And I would just like to say to, to the point that Tom raised, in Trailside, the sidewalks are adjacent to the street. And there isn't a problem with snow. You know, when they plow the streets, it's fine. Uh, we don't have any issues with it. And I don't have a problem with having the sidewalks adjacent to the street. I mean, it's a low traffic area, I'll grant you that. But when there are cars parked next to it, you got plenty of buffer between you and the drive lane. It's still a good eight, ten feet. So I just raise that, you know. Does the city own a little ground on your side? Of the I, I don't know who owns it. I, I plant there and I water it, so I'm probably in trouble. No, um, but I'm just... <laughs> no I, don't, I didn't get a permit, but my trees, uh, we have trees in our front yard near the sidewalk, and hopefully they're not even the sidewalk or anything. There seems a plenty of space. They're not big enough yet, but it does make it, you know, it's easy to mow the grass. It's easy to water everything. It works out just fine. I don't, 
I just, you know, I don't know if you even want to consider that one, but we have it where we are, and it's not a problem at all. Thanks, Bill. Bill. Hi, I'm Dan Schmidt. I live on 7th and H, 641 H Street. And um, I don't have any real firm convictions in terms of uh, which way to go, but I might have a suggestion. If narrowing in the lanes reduces traffic, which is, I think, what everyone's for, um, the idea of having narrow lanes, but having bike lanes next to them. Don't know if there's not uh, enough room for doing that, but I know in Denver where we live, uh, that's what they did. They have narrow lanes with bike lanes. So that gives you um, the um, advantage of having and, and narrow lanes to reduce speed limit from what I understand. Um, but also you have a little uh, error for margin for getting around because um, H Street has a lot of commercial traffic. Um, I talked to Hilton Lumber and I live on it so I see what's going on. So, and um, so I, I am concerned about sacrificing that amount of space for a parkway. I'm also in favor for parkway too. So, and, and I do like the concept of parkway and the buffer between pedestrians and the traffic, the way it looks and everything else. So <clears throat> I'd, I'd recommend if you can do it, ornamental trees only, enforce the ordinances about putting rocks and, you know, I mean, get tough on that. Also get tough on speed limits too, because my concern is I've kind of enjoyed the fact that H Street's not a thoroughfare for as all the other improved streets in town. It seems like when you improve a street, the speed limit goes up 20 miles an hour or so. So anyway, uh, whatever you do, I'm for it. I really appreciate all the hard work and, um, and the energy that's going into it. I think we do need to have a discussion, public discussion on this issue because, and maybe we can set some precedent for other streets going forward because uh, I think there should be some discussion on this, so that's it. Thank you, Dan. Um, my name is Andy Riemenschneider, and I live at 831 H Street. Um, I think it's a good idea to widen the parkways. I think it does slow the traffic, um, especially near the elementary school. I think that's a, a good idea. Um, I'm a little bit concerned about the, the street trees that are there that are that are potentially going to be removed. Um, I have a, a beautiful silver maple in front of my house, and uh, I'm sad to see it go. It's got a big orange mark in front of it, so I feel like it's on the checklist. Um, <laughs> and, I, and in some ways, I feel like, you know, I know some of these trees are problems, but I do put it out there, you know, just because a tree is 25 or 30 years old doesn't mean that it's time for it to go. In some ways, isn't that for an arborist or a botanist to decide whether a tree is healthy or not? Um, but I'll leave that up to the experts. Um, as far as the sidewalks and curbs, um, there are other options. Um, this right here is a, an idea of just, it's a traffic calming concept. Um, and basically, they're, they're called chokers, bump outs, whatever you want to call them. And um, essentially, it's just a, a widening of the parkway. Um, in, in some instances, or most instances, it probably loses a parking space, but that provides a lot more space for a particular tree. Um, in so doing, you're, you're narrowing the street. Again, um, instinctively, as a driver is driving down the road, if the, if the street gets narrower, that driver is going to slow down. Um, I think that's a great thing for H Street, again, near the elementary school. Um, and uh, in addition, uh, a lot of these bump outs can be designed so that stormwater can be routed into these planting areas. Um, that slows down the stormwater. It gives a place for that stormwater to perk into the soils, makes the trees healthier, and it reduces the problems that we have with flooding um, downtown. Um, so just a, a few ideas. Um, I realize this project's on its way to bid, so maybe it's too late, but just wanted to bring up a few ideas. Um, I guess last, um, H, H Street does need a major overhaul, um, so thank you for improving our neighborhood. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Walt Snen. I live at 820 H Street. I lived there 35 years, so I know the street pretty well. Just a couple of observations I'd like to make. One, by reducing the drive lanes by three feet in total, uh, we're taking a three-foot lane out of the, 
out of the road. My observation is that narrower drive lanes do slow traffic, but they slow it for one obvious reason. People are afraid. It's scary to go down a narrow lane. Uh, there's a perceived danger the narrower the lanes are. And that's a correct perception, I think. Uh, I don't want to see the lanes uh, narrowed at all. Uh, they need to be, in my mind, wider. We have a lot of bicycle traffic. If we narrow those lanes, we're going to see much more of that tr bicycle traffic on the sidewalks than on the streets because it is going to be a hazard. And uh, I think we need to keep it on the streets. I'm especially concerned down around the, uh, the elementary school. Uh, I, I don't want to see that narrowed down there. I don't want to see kids on bikes having to vie for space on the road with uh, semi trucks headed to Hilton. And uh, I think it's a, a really bad idea to narrow that street. So just my two cents worth. Thank you. Thank you, Walt. Thank you, Walt. Tom. I'm Tom Gordy. I live at 707 H Street, and I'm not in favor of narrowing the streets. I've had two incidences of hit and run, one total a car. I believe my son lost a mirror, too. Um, I've got two trees ever since I've moved in 15 years ago to that, ho that house. I've lived on H Street for 28 years, but uh, for 15 years, the city never wanted to remove my problem trees, and I have a problem sidewalk, so if you want to take my trees, do it tomorrow, please. But uh, I don't have a problem with the bike trail as long as I get to park in it. But the streets don't need to be narrowed. I think it's a safety issue. And when you put in the water meter, a lot of people yelled about, they were being done wrong. They needed to be deeper to keep them from freezing, but someone had a perception that they wouldn't freeze and we're paying for it. So if you want to make the streets narrower because of your perception of maniacs will slow down, most people drive right. There's a couple of maniacs that won't slow down. And I live in an area where there's two, I live between two four-way stops you wouldn't believe in the summertime sitting out there in the evening watching the maniacs run the stop signs. So you're not you're dealing with maniacs on a narrow street anyway. So uh, narrowing it won't slow them down. Thank you. There you go. Thanks. Thanks, Tom. Fred Maxwell, 837 H Street. Um, I, I could go either way. Um, I think speed is an issue that needs to be looked at. And I speak for several other people that couldn't be here that work at the high school that live up towards Highway 50 on H Street that um, it, they're a long ways away from the stop sign. They have a child and they're worried about speed. So whatever research you do that is going to give us the best chance of slowing people down. I mean, I'm a block away from a stop sign. and. Just because the speed limit is posted doesn't mean that people are actually going that speed. Um, and my, my second point is a question, and that is about the sidewalks. Um, is, is it up to the private individual to replace their own sidewalk when it comes to this? Who am I asking here? So the sidewalks are not included as part of this project. Um, City Council at the last council meeting directed the Planning Commission to undergo not because as you know, H Street is not alone on the sidewalk problem in town. So the Planning Commission over the next three or four months will be conducting public meetings um, for the entire city on how to begin to fix our sidewalk problem. Well, it's part of the master plan. So. Well, it's a master plan. But, okay, and then they'll be bringing some recommendations back to council for how to finance that, right? No. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead, Darren. <laughs> 
Um, my understanding, the Planning Commission is going to be working on where sidewalks should be in the long term. Where should we aim to have sidewalks and making changes to land use code relative to development on uh, whether or not they would be required in certain areas of town. The City Council is certainly well aware that uh, the condition of the sidewalks is a non long neglected issue. Today what the code requires is that's the responsibility of the individual property owners. The Council is going to have a further discussion about uh, whether that's the right way to um, treat that, probably in the in the coming months. Okay. So then I would just speak about what s certain people have brought up about having the sidewalk right next to the curb. If we're if the public is in charge of the sidewalk, and part of the reason why you're putting the sidewalk right on the street is to get rid of the rocks. Well, there could very well be rocks there still because it's not being replaced with actual sidewalk. It would be different for every property owner. So just something to think about if you're how serious you are about changing that plan, but something to think about if you do. Thank you. Thank you. I am Carrie Nelson, um, and I actually own Plowboy, so I'm down at the bottom end of, of 8th Street. Um, and I walk and bike and drive that, you know, the length of 8th Street pretty regularly. Um, what I would say about having parkways or not having parkways, paying attention to them or not, is that they kind of give us a feel for what the direction of the city is. If you want the city to be a place where people can move through unencumbered, without stopping, without thinking, and just being all about their cars, then you shouldn't have parkways. You should make the streets about the cars. If you want to have a place where our people live in their city, they walk in their city, they appreciate strolling up the street in the middle of the summer when the heat's blazing and it's 92 degrees and there are trees there to walk by and they can walk to their neighbor's houses, they can ride their bikes up the street knowing that everybody that's, that's there is, well, at least m m the vast majority of them are being respectful, then you need to have parkways. If you want cars to go through as, as unimpeded as possible, then you need to not have parkways. So I think it's kind of just what you want the city to be about, whether it's on each street or any other street. That's, that's at least my perception of the parkway and the street and how it looks and how you use it. Thank you. Teresa Cortese, um, I w grew up on H Street and I own two houses there now. So um, I am not in favor of making the street uh, narrower. We do have the semis going down. We have people park on both sides. We have people who ride bikes. Um, we have people who walk. And I just don't think that there would be enough room for everybody if we narrowed the streets. So, my opinion. Thank you. I think Thank Teresa you, just touched on a point that uh, actually, and I think Michael will speak to this, uh, there's not supposed to be trucks on that street. <laughs> it's not a truck route. The truck route is 1st Street and Highway 50, and then utilizing that to 7th Street, going up or down which is an enforcement issue. My name is Suzanne Dennis, and I live on 919H. And we've lived there for 30 years. We've taken down six trees. We replaced the sidewalk three times. But I don't believe you should narrow the street. There are semis that go up and down the street constantly. There are people that park on the, both sides of the street, and you have to sometimes move over so that the semis can go up and down. I don't know if they can go a different direction or not, but at the present time, they do go up and down H Street. And as far as the speed is concerned, we do have speeders before 8 o'clock in the morning, before 3.30 in the afternoon, and at 5.30 at night. And if you put a speed traffic machine in the street, they know nobody's watching it. They know there's no camera. So speed doesn't make a difference. They're going to do it regardless of what you do. 
you just have to be able to catch them whenever you can. But narrowing the street is certainly not going to help the community or the children or the people that park on the street that don't have any place else to park. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay, you know how many years I've lived on H Street. <laughs> and first of all, I want to say thank you for even thinking of doing something to H Street. Well, you know, the potholes and all that. So this is going to be wonderful regardless. But living where I have lived on the corner of 8th and H and watching what happens around the school, you, you can't believe the traffic. And I have no idea what the new form of traffic is going to be with the new school. But when the school buses were there, I'm telling you that block was a nightmare uh, at, at the times of coming to school and, and leaving school. So that's the, I, I myself, I'm not really in favor either of narrowing the streets. Uh, and one other thing is you can tell from my age, and I know older people, and you've probably seen a lot of us who are, are terrible drivers, but you know, it, uh, a narrow street would be scarier than heck to a bunch of old people who are still trying to drive and trying to do a good job anyhow. But uh, anyhow, that's my feelings, and I have to tell you that I, I say please think it over carefully because I myself am not in favor of narrowing those streets. Thank you, Norma. Burn. Yeah, Vern Davis, I've changed the tone a little bit. I live on G Street. We already have a truck problem there. And you narrow H Street, I've heard a couple gentlemen say you're going to slow down traffic, you're going to get rid of truck stuff. You're just going to put more traffic over on G Street. And <laughs> I'd, <laughs> I'd like to ask Michael a question. Uh, you was working at one time on a plan for truck routes. Have you... So Still right gone. now we do have an existing truck ordinance that Keith was just asking me. The truck ordinance is if you're coming wherever you're going into city on the north side, you're using First Street, and you enter in at the street to the local traffic, and you go up it to Seventh. And then if you're coming on any delivery on the other side of Seventh, you have to use Highway 50. Okay, is it posted, and when will it be enforced? Because we have trucks every day, all day long. Size needs to be updated. Thank you. Uh, one more question, Michael. Or Mr. Yerke mentioned the sidewalks possibly closer to the street. Wouldn't that interfere with water meters? Well, with this with this pro with this particular project, the intent is to try to put the meters inside the homes. So and, and, and eliminate the pits. Well, the shutoffs will still be there, right? Yeah, the shutoffs would still be there, but there's water meters in, co in sidewalks all over town. Yeah. It's not really an issue. Oh, okay. Thank you, Vern. Todd Lichtenegger, 1331H. Just had a couple of questions. Uh, first of all, I think I'm in favor of the existing, the wider roads. A couple of questions if we don't know it, who's going to pay for the sidewalks. I think we should know that before we start the project. Some people, if you don't have the money, you don't have the money. Um, and to be forced to pay it, I think we should at least be aware ahead of time. And, and I was just curious about, like, the, the water meters. A comment was made earlier about should we, you know, have them in the house or out in the yard? Or is that more of a homeowner cost if we put them in the house? Or, or is that part of this whole thing? And my other question was about curb cuts. I mean, how do we establish what's where? I mean, obviously, if there's a garage, then it needs a driveway. If there isn't a garage, but there's a driveway, do we still get a curb cut? Are we going to know this ahead of time? That's all. Be going out and talking to everybody individually and knowing where you want to have your curb cut. There's some places that. Um, Use the microphone, please. 
there are some places that don't need one, we don't think, but there might be a potential use. So we want to talk to the homeowner, the property owner. And as far as the water meters and, and moving them, we were going to include that in the cost of this project. Okay. And, the and, so side the, mm -hmm. and the sidewalks are, are simply not part of the scope of this project. We're working from curb in for the most part. So we'll be paying for the sidewalks? If you would like to replace your sidewalk that uh, today, that would be your decision and your cost. Okay. But, but it's I'm, not part of the scope of this project. Oh, I see. They're not planned on put, be putting it. Okay, very good. Thank you. Thank you. Sir? What? Anybody else? I'm Melanie Schaffner at 905 H Street. When traffic goes from 9th Street across H Street, a lot of cars and trucks hit where it goes up onto H Street. Is H Street going to be lowered so that that doesn't happen? They hit their exhaust pipes and whatever else. And we can certainly look at that. Yeah, absolutely. We're getting very careful about the grades and the, and the cross sections uh, for a lot of reasons. <laughs> Thank you. And if people have other suggestions about that or problem areas, please, by all means, um, email those to us or call us or let us know somehow. We'll certainly pay attention to that. Sorry. My name is Katya Petrisky, um, 811H, and I think I'm in the minority here, but I would like to consider narrowing the streets. I've lived on a narrow street in Denver where people were very polite about passing each other and driving more slowly, and it was also near a school, um, and it put more awareness into the street. Um, I also believe that trees are very important. I think that, um, like we've seen on uh, 8th and H, beautiful, beautiful large trees were cut down when one of the houses sold, and it, it leaves the area looking bare and, and exposed. Um, you know, when they're gone, you realize how empty the place is, and when they're here, you realize how much you appreciate them. And I think that it would be important to consider what kind of a town we want. We, we live in a beautiful, more rural, environmentally conscious place where people feel these things are important. Um, trees are important. And, you know, I really worry that we are too much of a car culture, <laughs> that we center everything around driving, around cars, around um, things that don't really matter. You know, the children at the school matter, trees matter, driving slowly matters, getting trucks off those roads <laughs> matters, noise matters. And that's why I really think we should consider carefully not just looking at our car culture and keeping those roads wide. Change is hard, and it might be surprising that narrowing the road might be a lovely thing. Thank you. <coughs> Hello. Hi. Hi. I don't need a microphone. Um, <laughs> my, name, I my name is Karen Argus Lloyd. Um, I grew up on G Street. Um, I agree with the sentiments of Leonard Post. My parents live just down the street from him. I also represent an uncle who um, lives at 946 H Street. I'm against, um, I, I'm for keeping H Street as it is. As someone who's been um, gone from this community for a long time, I've been gone for 32 years and recently moved back about a year and a half ago. When I was born, when I was up here, you didn't have the bikes on the streets like you did. You didn't have the huge trucks, the semis, the campers driving down F, G, H, D, and E streets as you do now. And narrowing that street, H street, you're creating a lot of safety issues. Um, I myself have several times um, just going up G street and H street when you are um, 
there's car parked on the curb here, car parked on the curb here. <coughs> there's someone in a bike who's pulling a trailer, and you you have to stop because there's another another vehicle coming that way. So I think that the the thing that we, the citizens of Salida, have to do is think about the safety of those. Um, it's the safety of all of us, the safety of those of us who ride our bikes up and down these streets all the time, the safety of all of us who drive up and down these streets all the time. And again, representing my uncle who lives at 948, 946 H Street, I'm against um, white narrowing the streets. I want to leave them as is. Thank you. Hello, I'm Stephen Taylor, uh, 1047 F Street, and talk about traffic. We have lots of it, and I would love F Street to get narrower. Mm -hmm. um, I think it would be a good plan to give the trees of this town, or the future trees of this town, plenty of room to grow. I think it's part of what attracted me to this town. I am a relatively recent um, resident having moved here seven years ago um, I am concerned that my trees in front of my house are going to be taken down because they're tearing up the sidewalk and the gutter and I feel um, if we're going to rebuild spend money to rebuild streets that we should allow for these trees um, our, our part of F Street is nice and cool because of those trees the traffic actually perceptibly goes a little slower where there are trees. Um, and I, you know, I hate to see the change, but I would, um, the bump out thing, that was a great idea. I think another thing is, is we can move our sidewalks into people's properties to save trees. That might be a solution also. Um, I'm hoping that not all the trees are going to disappear from H Street. Um, is, is that the plan? You're going to tear them all out? I believe there are 14 or 15 that are on the list for removal. Um, some of them are simply aged out. Uh, the tree board is working with Public Works to develop a plan for tree replacement for those property owners who want them. So I believe there are 14 or 15 trees that are on the list for removal at this time. They're all marked with the orange on the curb. Um, the tree board and public works are uh, discussing ways to encourage property owners to work with the tree board to replace street trees for the property owners who are willing to take care of those as part of the street roof. So that's a, that's a great plan for the replacement. Um, give me an idea of how many you know what kind of percentage of the trees are getting is 14 yeah I don't have that half. in my head I'm sorry we could certainly get that information tomorrow for you okay thank you um, so trees slower streets um, you know why is the car almighty if you have to slow down and stop to let a bicycle go by great <laughs> that's what living in a small town is all about you want to live on Highway 50, then you can zoom right on by. I guess the state highway department thinks 45 is great for that. I think that's stupid too. Steve, that's another thank point. You. Let me just say that we did have some discussion about some of the trees that are there, that the roots that are pushing those things up could be cut. And uh, Mrs. Moore suggested that if that happened, those roots probably won't grow back and tear those streets up, but the trees might be able to remain. So not necessarily am I in favor of taking those trees down if we can do something else with those roots and leave the width of the street. Yeah, I would encourage that. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. Monica Grazenbeck. I live on West Sackett Avenue, and I'm a little alarmed to hear people discussing the parkway as something that may not be necessary. I think, well, I know the parkway, aside from being aesthetically pleasing and making our streets, our streets are not just for cars, 
They're for people. And I haven't heard anyone speak in favor of the two-legged, the people who walk. I'm a big walker. I love walking in Salida, having trees, having the parkway. It isn't just about cars. But getting back to the parkway, the parkway is a safety measure. There was a time when children rode their bicycles, their tricycles, played hopscotch, and used the sidewalk. That parkway separates children and people from the traffic. <coughs> when you put that sidewalk right next to the traffic, children can sometimes have, forget. People forget. There's no forgiving then, because you're right in the pathway of vehicles. And finally, I'd like to say, what in the heck are 18 wheelers doing going pa using the street past a school? It's time you guys crack down on that. Thank you. Thank you, Monica. I'm George, 130 North I Street. Well, uh, Sackett Street got paved, and we lost all our trees down there. I hate to see this uh, happen again on H Street, and it seems that the alternatives are to keep the street wide or narrow the street. Is there any impact on the existing trees one way or the other? And there's the potential to remove fewer trees um, should the parkway be wider. And there's also an opportunity to replant the or plant additional trees that are larger than the ornamental trees that we've recently been planting in the parkways. But there's no effect on the number of trees that will be removed, no, I think one there, way or the other. There could be um, an improvement. We could lose fewer trees if the parkway is if we move the curb out a foot and a half, yes. Thank you, George. This is my second time. Tom. That's all you get, Tom, <laughs> too. Okay, everybody's <laughs> complaining about the semis. There's stores down there that do commerce that we buy from Safeway, the lumber yards, and there's no easy way to get there except down G Street or H Street. And there's semis, you could have them crawl all over town to get there, but you, uh, you just can't deny the trucks from going down there, um, in my opinion. And, I do have problem trees. I'd like to see them gone, but I'd like to have new trees put back. I've got Chinese elm trees that they're 50, 60 years old. They've torn up the street curbing, torn up the sidewalk, and I'm not going to be sad to see them gone, but I do want new trees put back. So, and I'm in favor of trees. So, so just a reminder on the back of your. Um, Back of your handout, there's the Adopt a Tree program flyer. So, hi, hi. Jennifer Fowler, business on G Street, live on Sackett. Um, when I came up to you guys a few months ago, I talked about the improvement that they made on the side streets going from first to Sackett with the narrowing project of the pavement. Um, luckily, another member of the audience here took a picture of exactly what you guys are looking at, what's gonna happen, um, the nice culverts, um, dirt fill, things like this. Um, and you can actually see from here, if we parked on the pavement, on the narrow street, on H Street, like we would have to on Sackett, you actually cannot get two cars through at the same time. Um, absolutely impossible so we all park at the side and fall into the craters so um, thankfully Monica was snap happy and grabbed these pictures so I'll let you guys see actually what you're looking at I don't know if any of you ever drive down Sackett um, this was the improvement that we got um, between first and Sackett these are all the side streets 
We didn't score curbs and gutters, even though Salida runs straight to our street. So we get everything down there. Um, it's a mess. It's too narrow. I know people say that you can be careful and let cars go. You can't. It's really one way if you do park on the street. Um, ours just kind of falls off. But if this is narrow, like they're talking about H Street, there's no way you can get two cars at the same time with cars parked on each. Kids on bikes, you it just isn't going to happen. So actual pictures, if anybody wants to see them, and I'll... Is it okay, Monica, if I give them to them? Um, you know, it's really an irony. You're, you're thinking the opposite thing? <laughs> I took those pictures to show what a street looks like when it doesn't have a parkway, when it doesn't True. have trees, when it doesn't have curb and gutter. It's ugly. It's very ugly. It's awful. It's awful. I totally agree. <laughs> so this is my house here, so you can all drive by. Um, just don't run into my car because you can't actually drive. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jennifer. This is where it used to be. They narrowed it down and on both sides. Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> well, that's what the Good evening. I'm Greg Amadon. I live at uh, 229 West 5th Street, which is just around the corner from H. So I travel H quite a bit uh, and have for years. So in any case, I took a look at the streets, um, D Street through I Street. Those six streets are all 38-foot street widths. I think our city forefathers did a good layout in our town. They're not big streets, but they're not small streets. And I think sacrificing any width would be a mistake. That's my opinion. Thanks, Greg. Now, Diana. Diana Smith. I live on East 3rd Street. Just had a few random comments. Um, we have a street tree that's been there for probably eight years, and it just, within the last couple of years, it started really looking good. We've been babying it for all that time. And, um, you know, when you've got a narrow parkway, there's really not a lot of alternatives. So a, a kind of a construction truck was parked right in front of it, and when it pulled out, it pulled out a whole limb of the tree, and now, you know, we have kind of a tilted tree. So even with the ornamental trees, um, the existing parkways are really not quite wide enough. Um, I think I'd like to comment on just the, the look of Salida. When you look at Sackett right now, or you, you look at East Street, I mean, they're, they're naked streets. Um, when you lose those big trees, that canopy, it just it changes the look of the town. Uh, I just think we shouldn't sacrifice the, the beauty of Salida for, for some traffic. You know, what is wrong with having to slow down or even stop because um, there's oncoming traffic? I mean, it seems people are making it sound like it's such a big deal. We live in a, I think, a slow town, and that's, that's why we love it here. Um, we don't want it to change. Um, so I think I'd like to have council look at it from a little different perspective that the uh, the slower traffic what's wrong with that you know what's wrong with having to slow down thank you thanks diana i'm uh rob jolly 811 h street um you know tree city usa that's partly why we bought our house, I don't know, 12 years ago or so. And uh, we love the trees. It's nice and cool. Um, I would recommend, you know, ch lower the speed limit, especially with the school there. No problem with that. I wouldn't think unless the state has a problem. But, uh, uh, you know, we love the trees. That's partly why we bought here and support more trees and more healthy trees and slower traffic. And if we can reroute the the trucks for Hilton, you know, I shop there too. And, you know, I like seeing their trucks, but coming by with the, with the lumber and all these things, but maybe there's a different route. We can figure that out. Uh, I'm all in favor for healthier trees and a, 
uh, cooler environment um, on our street. Uh, I'm all in favor for more pedestrians and uh, slowing the cars down, slowing the traffic down. That's what I believe in. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Hey, thank you, too, for uh, putting all this together and for inviting us to uh, be in this conversation. So thanks a lot. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Rob. Uh, I'm David Park uh, from E Street. Been there about, had a house there for about 30 years. And about uh, 10, 15 years ago, how long ago was it when E Street was redone? It went from a really attractive street like F Street or G Street or H Street and, uh, <coughs> excuse me, and now it's like a new development. You, when I come to town, uh, I drive in to my house, it's, it's denuded of large trees. And these people, I mean, trees are really important, but so is a wide street. So, you know, what are you going to do? How many people here are in favor of wide streets? How many people like trees? Everybody, right? Well, I think that the bump out that the gentleman showed, which I haven't used a second yet, this is great. <laughs> the, the bump out that the gentleman brought is the answer for, that, we, that we have, we can use here. If there's a bump out, uh, you may, do you have that drawing that the gentleman passed out? This bump out, these bump outs would, uh, well, they'd, they'd narrow the street somewhat, uh, but not really when you, when you give up a parking space to make a bump out, you don't change anything about the width of the road. Am I clear? I'm not. Uh, if you, if, what a bump out is, it's a place where the, where the, where the sidewalk or the, or the curb comes out, goes around a tree, and then that particular parking spot is not a tree, and that allows you eight feet plus the parkway. And so you don't have to narrow the street. So we could put in 15 bu bump outs. It would take care of those 15 trees, or maybe we could put three, three bump outs on each side on every block. And it wouldn't have to narrow the streets, and it wouldn't have to take out the trees. Okay, so any, anything, anything you can do to avoid just killing those trees. Uh, <clears throat> the other thing is, uh, I didn't quite understand that if the city tree is the tree on city property if it's in the parkway? Well, if the city tree destroys an individual's sidewalk, <laughs> is, it becomes the, <laughs> the individual's fault. <laughs> <wall. laughs> no. That doesn't make That's sense. That's a different night. And we, <laughs> <laughs> it would require a whole night. That doesn't make sense to me, but there is an alternative to that. In Santa Monica, they use recycled tires in these rubber sidewalks. If you look at, just put in rubber sidewalks on Google, you can look, <laughs> and no, and you end up you end up at Santa Monica's website for their engineering department, and they talk about what they've done. It's a little more expensive than concrete, but if the tree pushes it up, they have great success there with just pulling up the rubber sidewalks, trimming the tree root with a, with a chainsaw, putting the sidewalk back, and they don't have to. It's not a major public works project, so I just recommend at least looking into that before you go into spending hundred thousand dollars on 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 the sidewalks. That's about it. Anyway, go check out E Street. You want to see after. You don't want to be like on E Street. Okay. Thank you, David. I'm Kathy Wrangler, and I live at 648 H Street. Um, I'm right across from the uh, grade school on the corner of 7th and H, and I had the fabulous <laughs> uh, blue spruce. Um, I will do anything that it takes to save my tree. It is quite the tree. And um, when I heard about these bump outs, I was so encouraged because I see this as a possibility where we can all get what we want because the streets don't have to be narrowed. And um, it, it just depends on who you're talking to. The perceptions are so different on H Street. Um, I don't perceive a lot of fast traffic. 
Mm. I mean, it's always been a really slow streak for me. And is it because of my tree? Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, the only time I, you know, I, I know Tom uh, had mentioned he had some hit and run, but I think there are occasions uh, around 2 o'clock in the morning where some things do happen, but it doesn't have much to do with um, H Street. And also we have uh, gained, uh, there is going to be less bus traffic. Um, I know Norma mentioned the bus, uh, buses on H Street, but they're going to be on H Street on 8. They're going to, they're now lining the buses. Instead of uh, lining up on H, they're going to be going on 8th Street. So that's not even an issue, really. And so we're going to be losing all that bus traffic. But I am here to say that whatever it takes, please let me know what I can do to save my tree. Kathy, it matters. isn't your tree inside your yard? The tree is inside the yard, but um, half of my tree is underground. Mm -hmm. And you, how's, and, how's and your sidewalks there? And the sidewalks, there is a slight amount of buckling, but it's not anything like what I've seen elsewhere. And um, all the years I've been there, I've never seen it. That is a beautiful tree. And, and it has not changed. The buckling is, is stable, and the tree is very healthy. But it is definitely in your yard, not on the parking. It is in my yard, but and I have had the main water line re, uh, replaced since I've been there. And um, very easily, uh, we work right under the root. And, uh, one little bit of trouble. No problem. So thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Wilt. So we handed out. Um, oh. Cinda. Cinda Green, um, not on H Street. But the bump outs, I think, is a good solution to the problem. And they can also double as rain gardens so that you don't have the need or as much a need for, uh, for the sewer drains or storm drains. Uh, you can put a bench on them. You could, and, and there's more room for the tree. You can put some public art on them. I mean, you could do all sorts of things with them. And I've never seen that street double parked, except maybe in small areas. So that, let's be creative. Let's do something creative. And the fact, I, I, it's really unfortunate that sidewalks are not included. I think $1.4 million in 2A funds now, we didn't have before. Thanks. Thanks, Edna. Anybody else? No one else? So originally we had handed out the flyer and asked people to put little X's on it, but by the time we collect them and count the tallies, I think it'd be easier if we just have a show of hands. Would that be best? That'd be good, Mike. Um, let me pull up two alternatives in here. Three on courage. I wonder. That's only two choices. There's been other choices offered here. And so. And H Street isn't going to get built this year. I think at this time we want to just get a reaction on the widening or the proposal. I think before we do that, though, sure. you know. We have that packet that was given to us. There are several people who had opinions here and others of us who have had phone calls. Mm -hmm. Perhaps okay. we need to add that information. Well, I think what Michael was after was just a curiosity is with this crowd where the balance was. Uh, the people that talked, I was keeping track up here, and I've got 11, or not, yeah, 11 to narrow, 10 to widen, and three alternatives. Mm -hmm. uh, don't know that that's the whole group or just the ones that talked. So I, I, that was my intention. It was just, a, yeah, just get a general consensus. We certainly I, I think it more. the same. I would like to see that. I mean, in whatever shape or form we narrow the street, who wants to narrow it? 
whatever shape or form we keep it as wide as it is I'd like to know that too so this cross-section is a what H Street looks like today so if I could get a quick show of hands on who would like to keep it that way leave it the way it is Same way. <laughs> Well, I, I mean, we can talk about the bump outs too. I just would. Okay, who wants the bump outs? Who wants bump outs? Who wants to plow the, plow the snow? You, have, you need to realize these bump outs are going to narrow that street. They're, they're going to narrow that. Yeah, they will. With this, with this drawing, it will narrow that street. Special tax assessment too. Michael, when you were in Buena Vista, didn't they do the bump outs on the main street down there? They went through the, they actually, when I was up there, we went through a whole complete streets program. But in, on Main Street, they did the bump outs. And the space that's used for bump outs is the parking. So it's not the drive not lane. The width. Okay. So you don't lose that. Um, and then there are benefits to bump outs. You can, like it was stated today, you can also put, um, you know, Matt can, Matt's going to love engineering, but you can add, you can add cuts in there and get storm, storm water retention in there that helps water trees and so on. Plowing is a big, big problem that I see in that deal, but, uh, so. What's it do to you on maintenance, the bump outs? Uh, gives you something else to hit, but <laughs> you got to be a little more careful. You learn after a while. <laughs> Mr. Salmi, I wanted to ask you too. Uh, we're going to replace. Is it planned that we're going to replace all the curb and gutters, all of them, whether they're broke or not? Um, yeah. Okay. That's been my experience with the with the percentage that we have bad right now, it, it's cheaper just to do the whole thing. Okay. It really is. Boring. Another question I have for Mike. Is you talked about adopting a tree, and there's a fifty dollar fee for that to get the tree put in. They, it, I think, it, the reason for the fifty dollar fee, I think, is shows that the property owner is going to care for the tree. But we use the tree. I think averages about three to four hundred dollars, and so the rest of that is used in our Arbor Day funds to support that adoption. And at this time, the city's paying for those trees. Is that not right? Yeah. To replace them. Except I'll for the fifty dollars. Maryland talk is her. Okay, Maryland. Clarify that. We instituted several years ago the fifty dollar buy-in from the homeowner, just so they got a little skin in the game. And um, when it comes around time to water again, as happens once a week with these new trees, they don't go well. You know, didn't cost me anything, so. So anyway, so that's to encourage a little uh, uh, thought on the part of the homeowner that they're invested in this tree. Um, the trees generally run from 200 to $300 to purchase and plant. And What uh, type they, of tree is it, Merle? Well, what we have been planting in the four-foot parkways have been the smaller ornamental trees. The These are trees that will not, we hope, down the pike create problems with the curb and with the sidewalk as they increase in uh, trunk diameter and as their roots increase in diameter. I'm really so, glad you're here and uh, I had some questions about the roots. We talked about those roots. The big trees that are there, uh, the 14 that they've talked about needing to be taken down. How many of those could be saved by cutting the root off and leave them there to see. There good. are, of the 14 um, that were identified, probably five, six are, are not worth saving. They're in, they're in sufficiently bad shape. If they were left there in that condition, what would happen to those trees that are in that, in that condition? They've got a lot of dead in them. Um, if you were to, to co go back and prune the trees, uh, you're not going to have anything left by the time you get the dead out. Marilyn, do you think we're looking at 10 bump outs <clears throat> instead of 15? You know, I guess that goes back to a question of design, Tom. You know, bump outs, do we just want to say, okay, let's have four, for instance, on each block, and we'll put them at these spaces. 
Um, I think if we were going to do bump outs, that rather than trying to do bump outs out around existing senescent trees, let's put bump outs in and plant new species. And if we had bump outs, I mean, that'd be great. We could put in trees that will ultimately be really large shade trees. And once again, not in our lifetimes, but once again, Salida could have that overarching canopy. So maybe you get rid of the ones that you think maybe have five to 10 years left, you go ahead and pull them, and then put a similar type large shade tree right. in but, the bump out. But again, I caution you that this is not gonna happen in our lifetime. As the gentleman was speaking about E Street, you will go up and down that that street, and we replanted uh, where a lot of those trees came out, you don't have a sense of a tree-lined street. Uh, on West 2nd, which was done um, in 2003, so 10 years ago, between 4th Street and 10th Street, uh, there were new trees planted. Again, they were smaller ornamental trees. Uh, again, you go up and down West 2nd, you do not have the sense of a tree-lined street. Um, on 1st Street in 2000, between 4th and 6th, there were uh, actually some medium-sized shade trees, largely um, uh, honey locust, and there were some green ash that were also planted there. Those are beginning to turn into nicely sized trees um, 13 years later. So whatever the decisions are as regards the trees, it's going to look very different on each street. Well, I got the feeling that the majority would kind of like to have the wide street. Now, they'd also like to have the bump outs. So architecturally, it'd be nice mm -hmm. for somebody to work with uh, the designer and, and do something that makes sense because I assume you're gonna have a bump out on this side of the street and maybe a bump out on the other. I would assume opposite, yeah, if indeed what you want is a traffic calming. But that's-, that's Whatever that's you think well, there, I don't know. So there's different ways to utilize bump outs, Tom. And I, you know, certainly like 7th and 8th Street, right by Longfellow Elementary, what you're able to do with a bump out is extend that crosswalk, yeah. that pedestrian refuge area. So where we have kids crossing the street by the schools, that certainly would be a great opportunity to use them. And then I know what, what Andy's the one that brought this up. He's in the mid block section and he has a, a pretty healthy um, tree there. So you could also do a mid block bump out. So I think it would, so it probably so you would. you think you could work with the designer and I think you could, that yeah, I think you could come up with a really interesting days. streetscape and, and mix it up and it won't be to, to try to save some of these trees that are being spoken about. It'll probably be a little bit more organic, I guess. But we certainly would want to utilize those bump outs, and especially, I, I really see that as an opportunity around the schools. I'd like to see see consideration on part of the homeowners who have to put pay for this. If we're going to do this across the board, I would like to consider this being a city project, not something that the homeowners have to fund. This should be spread out among the the citizens just like they're paying for the streets. Yeah, there is no, yeah. there's no cost to the homeowner. Oh, so you're saying that there, as far as the the sidewalks and whatever. No, the bump no, outs. Sidewalks. Okay, yeah, covered. but well, but that's what I'm talking about is the sidewalks. Okay. I mean, we're we're going to do the project. Why not just, you know, cover the whole thing if you're going to do it across the board? It's just an option. So. Yeah, I would comment that if you're talking about. Put it, you would want to put trees in bump outs at intersections no, because you got a visibility issue that right. we have to be talking somewhere um, yeah, mid-block mid or, you know. Correct. Yeah, the clear slight triangle, we have standards for that in land use code that we'd have to keep. Oh, and I'd like to clarify too that the money to purchase and plant the trees beyond what the homeowner contributes are actually in the city budget. Uh, they do not come from Arbor Day donations. We have sufficient Arbor Day donations to plant a tree, and that's about the extent of it. But you're all welcome to donate. <laughs> Michael, I had one other question about Carolyn. the bump outs. Of course, anytime you do that, you're going to take away from the parking. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you have any idea on Buena Vista Street how many 
parking areas that consumed? Well, actually, in Buena Vista, the um, parking, they actually gained a lot of parking because they went to diagonal parking instead of parallel. So you get, actually got two spaces for every space that they eliminated with that. So that's not really any good. The, the main, that's, the, that's, a, that's also a commercial district. So I think what we're looking at here on 8th Street with the residential district being there, um, it, again, I think we'll have to look at it. It's going to be hard. I, it's going to be hard to give you an exact design until you actually sit down and Matt looks at elevations and sees how water is going to flow. Um, again, I think it's an option we can explore. And we also got one letter from some people in Round Salida. There's some strips, sort of a driveway. They have strips of concrete to come into the curb cuts. And uh, is there going to be any significant changes in that that you've got planned? So Bob? the way the land use code states right now, if if you have alley access, your access to your house or your garage shall be from the alley. Mm -hmm. Now there are existing curb cuts that people have that obviously they park in, in, uh, in the driveways and those, those curb cuts will be replaced. But there will not be new driveways installed and backing out onto a street is actually a pretty significant safety hazard. So we, we want it and that's what's so beautiful about Salida is we have alley access for those for our automobiles and for our garages. So that will continue, but if you do have an existing driveway, that curb cut will be And Michael, your experience with the bump out, mm -hmm. I see this water coming down the curb and gutter, you know, yep. towards the river, and it hits the bump out. You can design that bump out so it'll flow. So it'll they'll actually be, be catching sediment and stuff. There's actually a gap in the curb, and the water goes right into the into the planter. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. May I make a comment? You have Mr. Gore. We can have good service here. Yeah, go ahead. I would like to suggest to the uh, planner, uh, the community development director, and the public um, works director that you could possibly use the city's website to put some visuals on there for the whole community to log on to, to get onto and look at because there is nothing like seeing what those, those bump outs look like. They're wonderful. I, I think this is probably the best solution to make everybody happy and to keep our beautiful city and our beautiful trees. Thank you. Thank you, Monica. Uh, Dare, do you have enough input to turn those guys loose? No. <laughs> so is there consensus that the uh, council would like us to pursue bump outs? Leave the street as wide as it is. <laughs> Understanding, of course, there will be, um, you know, some things that require further discussion that will have a budgetary impact, mm -hmm. of course. Um, there will also be, uh, need to be some discussion about maintenance of those bump outs. Um, typically, what we've done in the past is that the parkways are the responsibility of the adjacent property owner to maintain. The city doesn't really have a way to maintain landscaping on those. Um, so that'll have to be part of the discussion and consideration as well. And I'm sure other things will come up as we delve into this. Yeah, and, and I would like to see um, also when you talk about budgetary impacts, I'd like to see schedule impacts. Oh, yes. Uh, and, uh, and it could be that we'll have to rethink our plan for doing H Street in two consecutive years, and maybe it's going to, maybe we can only do a third of, of H Street each year for three years. I mean, I'd just like to see what the impacts are. I think we need to also add that um, we were given a set of um, emails and letters that were sent, and if I read this right, five of them wanted us to increase the parkway, two had no opinion, and one was opposed. I also had four phone calls uh, at home. Um, I had uh, one yes, it happened to be a bicycler. She said, save the trees. A no, no would make the streets uh, dangerous. And then two that spoke, one of them said, 
they, it hadn't been measured correctly but didn't give an opinion, and the other one uh, said, let's put lilacs in there <laughs> or something. Oh, boy. So that's my input. <laughs> Also, I lean on these letters I went through and I found four that were residents of Salida, three of which were on H Street and the rest of them were from out of town. And there was one deal here that I looked at. Uh, let's see, what was it? Uh, it's out of Inglewood and a, what was it now? Um, yeah. oh, <clears throat> of the emails we received. They're from out of, people from out of Inglewood now. How they got contacted, I don't know, but yeah, here's their, their input was also considered. But I found it surprising that we had more letters from out of town than we did residents. <laughs> My apology for not quite understanding a minute ago what we were doing. Now I'm on board with you people on that. Uh, Dara would would we be able to proceed with uh, bidding? You think these bump outs are going to affect that bid enough, Bob, that we need to redesign that completely? I, I yes. Think, yeah, there's going to be some redesign. Uh, I'd like to ask Matt if he thinks it's going to slow it down another month. Or, you know, if we got the same width, you just put some wiggles in there. Make a time commitment <laughs> yeah, in front of a hundred people. <laughs> and, and instead of narrowing, doing bump outs. Mm -hmm. It's about so a month behind schedule. About a month behind. From today. Okay. Well, we would have been a month behind with the narrowing anyway. We were a month behind. Period. <laughs> <laughs> So if we were going to narrow, it wouldn't. It would be the same as putting these bump outs in. Okay. I want to also say I had about six to eight people that that told me they they wanted to keep the streets the same width too. So I add that to the mix here. Yeah, I had ten phone calls, and they were all from. They were all from H, and uh, all of them wanted wanted to leave the street with the same. We hadn't discussed the bump outs or anything, but they did were they were not in favor of narrowing it. I had two or three also. Yeah, I, I had uh, I had quite a bit of contact with folks in different ways. One was um, uh, about a week and a half ago I actually went out and knocked on doors on H Street and some of the folks who were kind enough to open it and talk to me uh, are here tonight and uh, uh, I also had a number of phone calls, a number of emails, and actually had two people who wrote me an old-fashioned snail mail letter and, and cared enough to put a stamp on it, and I thought that was really, uh, significant. Uh, all of the contact I had, um, well, I won't say, there, there were very few. There were only two people who actually favored uh, narrowing the street, um, but everyone, uh, whether they wanted the streets wide or narrow, uh, were concerned about the trees. So, I, you know, I think coming to some kind of a compromise where we can save some trees and still accomplish our uh, traffic control objectives uh, would be the, the best way to pursue it. Another thing I'd like to, I'd like to see two or three different designs on these bump outs because I'm seeing some that take a considerable part of the street. Some of them that I've seen that don't look anything like this are, are just kind of, uh, I mean, there's, there should be three or four designs that people can see so that they can kind of have an idea of what type of bump out they want because there's, I'm seeing a lot of different ones. These are just examples of yeah. them. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, that if we had a choice to see them. Hmm. I, th I think, and I do think, uh, going back to Chuck, uh, the ex-mayor, I think what you're doing here is kind of establishing uh, what your streets are going to look like as we go to different streets. So it's important that that we get it the way we want it because I don't. You're not going to have this meeting for every street, and and you're not going to have one street with bump outs and then one street over here without them. I, 
So I think we're establishing a uh, kind of a look and a traffic pattern here tonight. And yes. I think, I think we're also in that time we're also going to get an opportunity to see how this works. Right. Well, that's true. Mm -hmm. I mean, if it forward. doesn't work, right. you know. <laughs> yeah. Come up there. And we got to bump them back in again. <laughs> yeah. A quick question. Uh, is it five feet requirement for the sidewalks? Can they be a foot narrower? Is there any way we can buy a little space there? Well, we're not planning, again, to replace the sidewalks as part of the scope of this project. No, I'm, what I'm saying five is, feet is a we're breeze. allowing, we say we only have right. four feet for the parkway because we have to have five feet for the mm -hmm. sidewalk. Can we say... The sidewalk is only four feet. I'd have feet. to go back, Dan, and look at the ADA requirements. It's five feet. Okay. Yeah. Joe's telling me it's five. I, that's what the driver is, and it's that comfortable width. If you're not going to, oh, go ahead. But if you're not going to allow, I mean, if you're going to have the people pay for these sidewalks, then at least you know give us some kind of figures up front too, what they're going to be facing. Um, We're not requiring anyone to replace their sidewalks at this time, and as I said earlier, the council's going to have to undertake the larger discussion about how to okay. deal with the sidewalks in the next couple of months here. We've um, started down the path of addressing the safety immediate safety hazards, but we need to obviously have a larger conversation about how to replace them. Okay. I think another message that I'm hearing, and I, if I'm wrong, please tell me, I'm hearing that you don't like the 18 wheelers on H Street, and you'd really want them where they belong, which is on 50 and first. the other. Yeah, the, the first. Got to get them in and that, out. That Thanks, folks, for coming yeah, out. I'm sure that happens. Um, the other thing I hear is that slower is better, no matter what. And so I think we need to keep those in mind as we make this decision. You know, one of the things, I, I hear this so much, but I, I live on a street where there's a long line, I mean, long long ways they can go, and I don't see the speeding. I don't know where everybody keeps talking yeah, about the, the speed, but it's, uh, and they seem to just go by nice and slow. So. Thank you, Rob. Thanks, folks, for coming. Thank, Thank you, you very much. You. Appreciate it. Thanks for the turnout. So we have a um, direction, as I understand it, to look at redesign that would keep the standard width but incorporate bump outs uh, along the street periodically. Um, I'm unclear to I, I, I appreciated Marilyn's comment. You don't put a bump out because there's a tree there now. You put the bump outs architecturally where they make sense and, and we'll replace those trees. Agreed. Well, I think, yeah, I think Bob had a solution to that, though, didn't you, when somewhere along the line, I remember you talking about the possibility of cutting into the sidewalk uh, out piece. I, I think no matter what we have to do, we have to remember that all of yes. these trees have to be right. individually looked at. Right. Right. I think that the bump outs have to rule, mm -hmm. but then if there is a way that we can preserve them, on each one, but and but like Marilyn said, some of them aren't really worth keeping. So you know, th there's some of them that are very interesting, and I like to look at. But it doesn't mean that they're they're worthwhile to to have there. But while I got the mic, I'd like to say that it's really good to show that everybody came out, and we ended up with a an idea that I didn't expect, and it shows how good a public meeting can be. And uh, yeah, I, I great. Really want to thank you. <laughs> Um, so what does council want to see us come back with, if anything, to you prior to going out to bid? Well, I'd like to see a consideration of these bump outs and what's going to cost us in design. Okay. Uh, I think the majority here has expressed a desire from contacts with the council and also through this meeting that the desire is to keep the street width the same as it is, and let's look and see what we can save some of these trees. And I, I feel like that if we look at some of those trees and have Maryland and the tree board look at them, if those roots can be cut and they're not going to present a problem, 
then let's try and leave those trees there because Maryland's already said it's going to take 30 years for those trees that are planted now to mature. So would you like to see the cost estimates um, yes. before we go out to bid? Or would you like us to, typically what we do if the bid is going, our engineer's estimate is over the budget, is um, uh, parcel up the bid as, as alternate so that we can cut block by block if we need to. Yeah, one of the things I heard Bob say over and over again is that we are going to try to get through 10th Street. Mm -hmm. So if That's we say goal. we're <laughs> going to get, try to get to 10th Street, I'm happy with that information because that gives you some flexibility with, the, with this additional information. And if we miss the budget, of course, the council has the opportunity to consider that when you do the bid award and decide whether or not you want to allocate additional funds. Um, you certainly have that Let's move it along as fast as we can. Those people on H Street have been waiting a long time. <laughs> so well, if we can get it out to bid, it'll help Mr. Sami, and, uh, and maybe we can come up with something that will be pleasing to everybody. I think the council needs to consider if that bid comes in higher rather than cutting distance on the street, we need to take a look at funding it. I agree with you. Fine. Yeah. Teresa. Teresa. Sure. Yeah. Go, go ahead, Teresa. Teresa Cortese. I was just thinking, um, in front mm -hmm. of uh, the house um, that I have, we need to park there. You know, like if you have company where they have to park there. So on these bump outs, are you going to talk to the homeowners before you do the bump outs or? Is it just where there are trees now? It's going to be probably kind of a standard pattern for a block. Okay, as, as suggested by the engineers and by the design. Okay, so but they so would take into consideration that now. that's where you need to park. I mean, there's no other place to park. You probably going to have to move your car forward or backward. It would be, uh, I'm because, guessing. Because, okay, if we have a driveway, and so people can't park in the driveway when they, you know, like come to visit. So, right. or if I go over to the house or something like that. So that's why I was thinking, <coughs> you know, I don't know if <coughs> more than one length of a car difference. Well, right, Bob? Bob, the bump outs will not be more than one length of a car. So it will be, if it in trues at all and it would not um, that. block an existing driveway some of them that I've seen and this these would this would make a difference if they're done on the corners they present they preserve the ability to see mm -hmm. at the at the intersection and they don't necessarily take a parking spot to yeah no I liked the corner ones but I'm thinking we're in the middle of the block that's my vision as I see it which it can be flawed as you saw a minute ago you're gonna lose parking spaces yep I, I think I heard that we save as many of those trees as we can. Yep. I think Marilyn said there were 10 that she thought mm -hmm. she could save. And if that's the case, then it's 10. If it's 12, it's 12. But I don't want the tree to affect where you put the bump out. You put the bump out where you want it for the next 50 years. Uh, we'll get a tree in there in 20 years, right, Marilyn, that, that, that will be what we'd like to see. There you go, yeah. And, and preserve the ones that are there by, Mike, if you can cut a root, et cetera, whatever, whatever you need to do to save the 10 that you think are worth saving, then that's what we ought to do, don't you think? I do too. But to answer Teresa, I really think you're going to lose parking spaces in front of your yeah. house. You are. No. No. We're going to put the bump outs where. Only if it yeah. fits. Because and you save that tree however you can save it. Right. It, it doesn't have to be black and white on a straight line here. Right. No, I think we we have people here who have the expertise to try to figure out how to do that. 
she and one, didn't you say that even those 10 trees oh, are old? <laughs> so they aren't going to last more than how many years? Yeah, yeah, so. And kind of like people, they get old and then they yep. die. <laughs> <laughs> so you got to have more kids to grow up, right? And a deer. Well, Marilyn, I appreciate what you've done for the city, and the tree board is doing everything they can to save these trees, just like they did in Riverside Park. Thank you. <clears throat> we will certainly uh, plan to send out project updates. My understanding from council is we're not going to be hosting another public meeting to discuss the design of the street, that we have the direction we need to keep the project moving forward. Is that correct? And, and can mm -hmm. you make the, the design available at certain places or put yeah, absolutely. it on the website, would be Once we on have the website it. et cetera, so you you can uh, review it and if you have comments, get them in. Maybe, Maybe we can get them on the mail to publish it. Um, are you suggesting that we would have a comment <laughs> before going out to bid and potentially altering the design based on that comment? No, I think if you make that design available, Yes. And somebody calls Mike and said, you know, what if you did this? And he can say, well, this is why we did it this way. Mm -hmm. And if you got to really, like tonight, the knock or the, these little blowouts uh, <laughs> kind of came out of, kind of came out of this meeting. And I think it's a wonderful idea. Well, somebody may look at the design, and if you call Michael real quick and say, you know, what if he did this there? And he can explain why he didn't do that, or he can take your comment and work with it. So you would like us to put the designs out for additional public comment and potential redesign again before going to bed? Yeah. That's the end run. result of what you're saying. <laughs> it's, I don't want to slow. I, mean, I don't, <coughs> don't want to slow the process. No, no. that would slow, slow the process. The process down. Down. We don't want snow on the asphalt machine again. You know, <laughs> we do got to keep it moving. Okay. All right. I think you've got a lot of direction tonight. Thank you, everyone. Yes. Thanks for Thanks. coming, guys. Appreciate it. <clears throat> All right, Mr. Brown. <laughs> wow.